today we're going to talk about voltage and e-bikes and how it's going to affect the performance. Is it worth the price? Because the higher in voltage you go, the more expensive it becomes. So sit down, get comfortable. This video is going to be a little bit technical because this is based both off of my research as well as my experience because I've ridden 48 volt, 52 volt, 60 volt, and 72 volt e-bikes and I've developed thoughts about them. Okay, let's get into the, the voltage talk here. And hopefully this ride's a little bit scenic. I'm going into uh, Summit now, which is, uh, I think it's a pretty nice looking town. A little bit more on the wealthy side. So some good eye candy. But okay, the way I'm gonna structure this conversation, I gotta take this right, I think. I think. Yeah, it should be right. But, okay, so I'm splitting up the benefits or differences into two categories. The first is battery capacity and just the total energy potential. And the second is the, the output power or the performance, whatever you want to, you know, distill that down into. So let's begin with the basics. In case you don't know how batteries work, which, you know, no shame or anything, I didn't mean it like that. The watt hour is the unit to measure total battery capacity. And the way it's calculated is volts times amps. That gives you the watt hour capacity. So of course you can manipulate your total capacity by adjusting one or both of the inputs. No, I'm definitely not supposed to go that way. So for example, you could have a 20 amp hour, 52 volt battery. That's gonna give you a pretty solid capacity, but if you want to upgrade to even more, you could still have a 20 amp hour battery, but at 72 volts. So the voltage is a good reading of how energetic the battery is. And the amp hour is actually pretty simple. So a 20 amp hour battery can supply 20 amps of current for an hour, right? So that's a pretty simple way of understanding that. Okay, so that's the first part of the equation, the energy capacity of the battery. Higher voltage is gonna give you a higher watt hour, all else being equal. The next part is the actual power output and the effect on the ride aside from the range. And here the combination of the amps and the volts is gonna dictate how much power or watts the motor is going to have. And at this point, I wanna address a misconception that I saw out there that some people have. And that's that a higher voltage battery has a high potential of overheating the motor, right, creating a lot of heat in the system. And from my research, that is not the case. The amps is what creates heat in the system through resistance. And again, the power or the watts being sent to the motor is just volts times amps. So you can actually maintain the same heat level or amperage and get more power through a higher voltage system. Or if you want, you can keep the same power and decrease the amperage. Okay, so putting the technicalities aside, how is a higher voltage battery going to feel in comparison to a lower voltage battery, right? It's gonna be more peppy, a higher top speed. You know, what exactly is gonna be the difference because you are spending quite a bit of money on a higher voltage battery and increased efficiency really isn't a, a good enough reason to do that. And I have good news for you guys because a higher voltage battery is gonna give you both a higher top speed and more uh, pep off the line. And that's because you have more power. So that's gonna affect both things. So if you're running a motor at 500 watts versus 2000 watts because of a higher voltage battery, that's obviously gonna have a higher top speed and better acceleration. Take a look at this guys, <laughs> gas spending money on maintenance. Wow. Well, okay, we got electric over here. A Mustang Mach-E. Nice, nice. I can respect that one. Oh my gosh, another Mach-E. Okay, okay, that's cool. That's cool. But yeah, hopefully that addresses another misconception out there, which is only the amps being sent to the motor affects the peppiness. The voltage does too, because it's just total power. And the, the top speed is a bit more interesting. So the voltage does have a direct measurable effect on your top speed. 
if you take a look at the uh, specs page of really any motor, you're going to see a, an RPM per volt rating. And that's simply how fast the motor speeds um, with you know, each volt applied to it. So again, if the motor has um, a 10 RPM per volt rating, then of course increasing the voltage is going to make the motor spin faster. We're going to go in that park over there. Well, it's a train station, but it's a green space. I'm all about that. Yeah, so let me gather my thoughts here. I think that's all my main points. I mean, it's pretty simple overall. So a higher voltage battery is going to give you a higher overall capacity because it's more energetic. In terms of performance, it is going to have a direct impact on the acceleration because the total power is volts times amps. And the top speed of a motor is fully dependent on voltage. Again, they all have that rating of RPMs per volt. So you can get that better performance and higher power without really increasing the heat in the system as well because the amperage is what mostly affects the, the heat generation within the system. So yeah, that means higher voltage batteries are more efficient, more energy dense, and they give you more power. So is that worth the price increase? I think so. The next obvious question is, how many volts is enough? Well, as mentioned, I've ridden 48, 52, 60, 72, and I'm definitely a fan of 72 volts. But my current bike being 60 volts, I feel like it's, it's adequate. I'm happy with it. I would want 72 volt battery, don't get me wrong. This form factor, I actually couldn't find a 72 volt battery with enough uh, capacity. They only went up to 14 amp hours, this style of battery at 72 volts. And again, with our simple math, this is a higher capacity being 60 volts and 19.2 amp hours. But a 60 volt battery is still pretty high up there. It's gonna give you a lot of the benefits of a high voltage system. And I like having a uh, range. So the total watt hour capacity was uh, pretty high up there on my list of must haves. Yeah, so that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned something from it. If you want me to uh, cover more topics in the future, let me know. Oh yeah, this is doable. Nice, nice. Oh yeah, this is, this is quite the life hack. Why haven't I done this before? Perfect. Whoo! Yeah, I gotta say, the, the voltage level I have here, paired with the geared hub, really does give me uh, the exact uh, low-end power that I want, as well as the efficiency. Let's go to combo, because that's another factor you have to consider, you know, direct drives versus hubs, or uh, geared hubs, because the gears affect acceleration and your top speed. So that's just another layer on top of the whole uh, equation you have to figure out. But if you're still watching and enjoyed, you guys know we appreciate a like. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm, helps to spread the content to other people that might be interested in the lifestyle. Of course, if you want to see more content, make sure you are subscribed. Don't, don't rely on the YouTube algorithm because that thing changes on, it seems like a weekly basis. Sometimes it sucks, sometimes it's good. So make sure you are subscribed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Good reel.